Well, in our week-long series, Planet Earth in Crisis, we are taking a closer look at the issue of climate change and the solutions to address the crisis. Clean energy is certainly a big part of that discussion. Nuclear energy accounts for 10% of the world's electricity, but the industry has been plagued by concerns about safety and cost overruns. One company says its technology can change that. We spoke to New Scale Power co-founder and CTO, Dr. Jose Reyes, and started the conversation by asking him why small modular reactors they're developing are likely to change the game. Oh yeah, the, the, uh, the differences are tremendous. Uh, you know, you think about the designs from 50 years ago uh, and the, what we can offer today, uh, advanced computers, modeling, uh, uh, digital INC, it's a whole different uh, way of building power plants, uh, operating and maintaining them. So small modular reactors are, are kind of a new wave uh, and very innovative in, in, in design. And what, what makes it innovative? Because when you think about the nuclear industry, there's certainly been a lot of questions around not just the safety, but really about cost overrun issues. Um, how does building this on a larger scale and having this template in place, how does that allow you to scale at a, a quicker rate, but also a cheaper rate? Right, yeah, so what we've done uh, is we have a reactor vessel, which is inside a containment vessel, and they're relatively small, so about 15 feet in diameter, 70 feet long. But the secret is that it's all built in a factory. Uh, so you're doing all your nuclear construction, fabrication in a factory, and then separately, you're doing your civil construction on site. So it's a parallel construction approach that greatly reduces schedule and cost. Uh, schedule and cost there. Um, uh, let's talk about where things stand. You've got uh, a, a plant that you are building out uh, over in Utah. Uh, what's the timeline on that right now? Uh, so the, uh, the customer drives that, the, the, the uh, operating decision. Uh, so their commercial operation date is uh, currently 2029. Uh, that's when they plan to replace some of their coal-fired plants. Uh, but NewScale has been preparing for this, uh, this uh, uh, well in advance. Uh, we now have our final design approval from the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So we're the first SMR to get that. Uh, and we can start delivering modules as early as 2027. You were talking about the cost and scale benefits of this technology. Uh, but if you look at the budget right now on that particular project, we've seen it go from $4.2 billion to $6.1 billion. When you look at that, does that go against the argument that you've made about the benefits of pushing forward with SMRs as opposed to what is seen as more traditional nuclear technology? Yeah, no, it's really, it's really interesting to note how cost estimates are developed. Uh, so right now we're at a class uh, three estimate. And so that has uncertainty on it. Uh, and then we go back to the customer and we, we inform them, this is what we're estimating in terms of the price that we could provide for you. Uh, they add on top of that, then their, uh, their, their local costs, the cost for uh, site uh, engineering and, and things like that. Uh, and now we talk to them again and say, well, is this the size plant that you want? Now, one advantage that we have that has not been available in the past is that we can go to four modules, uh, six modules or 12 modules. And so that of course reduces the cost depending on, on what they need. And so we're tailoring uh, our design so that it's very responsive to customers as opposed to what was done in the past. Uh, the one size fits all just doesn't work anymore. Uh, so we can offer them a four or a six pack at a much reduced cost. And we try to meet their, uh, not only their capital cost requirements, uh, but also the levelized cost of electricity. Uh, so for this first project, uh, they've set a target of five and a half cents uh, per kilowatt hour. And so that's what we're working towards right now. But how do you address the cost overrun issues or concerns? So one of the, we've, we've done quite a bit of studying on the cost of overruns and what's been done in conventional nuclear power today. So this is very different. Uh, this is something that can be built in a factory, uh, shipped by truck, rail, or barge, the, the, the individual components, and then installed uh, in a pool. So it's a much simpler construction uh, than in the past. So we have a good sense of cost there. Uh, and it helps reduce the, uh, the schedule because you're doing this parallel construction and, and uh, fabrication. Now, another novel uh, part of what we're doing is that we've gone smaller. So smaller components, uh, much fewer components. Uh, we can access forgings from all over the world. Uh, whereas in the past, we were very limited as to where you could get your parts because they were so large and so specialized. Uh, so we're looking at a much different design. And lastly, what we've done uh, is in studying what's driven some of the cost overruns, I think there's a couple of things. 
Well, first, uh, I think having a design that's 80% complete is really needed uh, before you begin construction. And that hasn't been done in the past. Uh, so our design will be at least 80% complete before we go to the field. And there's always some, uh, some site uh, engineering that has to be done. I think the second thing that can be done to reduce cost is to really develop the infrastructure of our country. Uh, you know, our nation has really lost a lot of uh, manufacturing and construction capability in the nuclear field. And so uh, they're having to relearn a lot of things. Uh, so I think we have an opportunity right now uh, to do something that's different, uh, to, to leverage what's being done by this administration in terms of infrastructure development, to make sure that we can meet schedule and cost. On, the, on that front, we have heard from the White House talking about establishing a, a clean energy uh, standard, if you will, to, to find the right energy mix to get to net zero by 2050. Um, how are you looking at nuclear uh, in, in that energy mix? How significant do you think nuclear is likely uh, to be um, the role it's going to play in getting to that ambitious goal of net zero by 2050? Yeah, net zero is, is a challenge, right? We're going to have to use uh, all the resources we have at hand. And so nuclear power right now represents 60% of the, the carbon-free electricity produced in the United States. So we need to include that as a tool. Now, there's been at least two or three different studies that have been released. Uh, one was the E3 study out of California. They did a study for Washington State. Uh, the other was Rocky Mountain Institute. They did a study for New Jersey. And MIT has done a very comprehensive study looking at the future of nuclear power. And what all three of these studies show is that the least path cost to uh, net zero uh, is to include nuclear power. Uh, and once you get to a certain fraction of energy production with renewables, uh, you have to worry about grid stability and you have to overbuild. Uh, so you need at least 30% of the, the power coming from stable nuclear power in order to, to meet your objectives and be able to afford it. That's certainly the case uh, for what supporters of nuclear energy have said. But when you look at some of these targets, uh, we're talking potentially of the Biden administration looking at slashing emissions in half by 2030. And yet New Scale's first project isn't expected to come online until at least 2027 or 2030. What do you say to those critics who say, what's the point in investing in scaling this technology now when we won't even see it until the end of the decade? Well, that's a great that's a great comment and I, I think it's just reflective of uh, the process for for nuclear uh, reviews and approval I think that's part of it uh, and the other part of it is uh, again aligning that that manufacturing base that within the United States uh, so I think that's the other part of it uh, but of course uh, as right now we're talking to lots of other customers that's exciting ever since we got our uh, our design approved by the nuclear regulatory commission uh, we've been receiving requests not only in the US but all over the world and so this is a huge market, so we're, we're excited about that. And potentially there may be some projects that come online sooner uh, in other countries, but we're still looking at that. But we have um, uh, agreements with uh, Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, uh, Jordan, Canada, Ukraine, and, and the United Kingdom. Uh, so uh, this is a big market, uh, and uh, you know, we, we're predicting about uh, $100 billion by, uh, by 2035. So we're looking at that, and there's opportunities not just in the US, but uh, all over the world. <laughs> 